Welcome back friends. In the previous video we looked in the structure of cell membrane and it is where we ended. So now we are going to dig on the organelles and this is where we shall we shall end up. I don't mean in this video but when we'll be finishing organelles it's the end of cytology. So before discussing organelle, let us discuss the concept of protoplasm. So protoplasm is the combination of cytoplasm and nucleus. So the protoplasm is the living part of the cell which is made up of nucleus and the cytoplasm. So nucleus and the cytoplasm together determine life of the cell. It is enclosing by the cell surface membrane. So cell surface membrane, the, it enclosed the protoplasm. And the lifespan of the cell is determined by the two components. So, sometimes you can be asked the question, cytoplasm without nucleus is useless, and the nucleus without cytoplasm is short life explained. So, this is because the statement implied that both the nucleus and the cytoplasm determine the life of the cell. Nucleus control all activities of the cell. Nucleus control all what is presented in cytoplasm, where cytoplasm supports the nucleus. So, Nucleus ya wezi kafanya kazi peke yake. Lazima yue na cytoplasm ambayo cytoplasm ito control all activities. Yani nucleus ita control activities ambayo zinafanyika kwenye cytoplasm. Wakati cytoplasm ita support nucleus kush. So in short cytoplasm is the slightly viscous, slightly viscous transparent fluid which is often glanular which is made up of soluble part called cytosol and in soluble part made up of living and non-living structure. So, the soluble part is called cytosol. Kwa hiyo, kembeo cytosol si shangai ni soluble part of the cytoplasm. Kwa hiyo, the soluble part me kwa media of living and non-living material. The living structure of cytoplasm is made up of structures of different shapes and sizes called cell organelles. Kwa hiyo, the non-living structure of cytoplasm called cytoplasmic inclusion. So, they include starch, grainy, glycogen, glanule, oil droplet, crystals of substance to be executed, and etc. This is the non-living part of the cytoplasm. So from there, we are saying that he, we are saying that he, not chemical substances such as ATP proteins do not completely form physical solution. Kwasabu, they are soluble in nature. So they rather remain dispersed as colloid. This account for the colloidal nature of cytoplasm. Co colloidal manake cytoplasm na kwa kama vile uji uji mzito. So but the functions of cytoplasm it is the site for metabolic activities. Different reactions take place in the cytoplasm such as glycolysis. And here when we are saying about cytoplasm being the site of the different metabolic reaction, we are normally discussing about the concept of glycolysis. Also, cytoplasm store chemicals of life such as starchy, glycogen, oil droplet, etc. Cytoplasm is the media where synthesis of various chemical substances takes place, such as protein synthesis and facility synthesis. In the protein synthesis, the process of transcription, that is, from DNA to messenger RNA, takes place in the nucleus. But the process of translation, that is, from the messenger RNA, to protein chain takes place in the cytoplasm. Another function, it forms the ground substance located between the cell organelle. So it supports cell organelle and allow them to perform different function, taking different raw materials from outside, which is cytoplasm, into the cell organelle and perform different reactions. Another advantage, it is where cell organelle are suspended, which perform different activities such as mitochondria, where aerobic respiration takes place and mitochondria is normally known as the powerhouse of the cell because it is where all the energy of the cell is produced. Ribosomes where protein synthesis takes place and different organs such as Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum and etc. Also cytoplasm it facilitates the back transparent of material between adjacent cells. So cytoplasmic streaming is just like a movement of material within the cytoplasm. Materials can move from one place to another place in the cytoplasm. And the mode of movement is always by cytoplasmic stream. There are other methods of movement, but the method which is supported by the cytoplasm completely, it is called cytoplasmic streaming. So, 
Actually, our aim is not to discuss about cytoplasm, but it is about to discuss the structures present in it. And it is what we call cell organelles. So cell organelles, we are defining them. An organelle is a specialized subunit within a cell that has a specific function, and it is usually separated separately enclosed within its own membrane. So most of the organelles, they are enclosed by the membrane. And as we have seen here, the advantage of the membrane being closed, we separate them from the outside environment, which is cytoplasm, and we allow the chemical reaction to take place faster. We allow the chemical reaction not from mixing each other. So as you can review my last videos, you can see the advantage of the organelles to have membranes. So cell organelles, they have specialized function. Each organelle within a cell has its specialized function. Mitochondria for energy production, Golgi apparatus for processing proteins, ribosomes for protein synthesis, and things like that. So both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell have organelles, but organelles in eukaryotic are generally more complex. So this is complex. Organelles in eukaryotic cell are generally more complex as compared to organelles in the prokaryotic cell. So types of organelles, we can classify organelles on three classes basing on either they are double membrane, they are single membrane, or they are non membranous So double membranous organelles, they are actually three. So we have nucleus, mitochondria, and the chloroplast. For animal cell, we have nucleus and the mitochondria. These are the double membranous organelles. While in the single membranous organelles, we have many of them, such as smooth and rough and plasmic reticulum, large permanent vacuole in plant, Golgi apparatus in both plant and animal cell, perogosomes, ribosomes. Also in non-membranous organelles, including ribosomes and, and the microtubules. So we can say that the adaptation of these organelles depends on their function. The function performed by the nucleus, mitochondria, and the chloroplast differs from the function performed by the single membrane and is different from the function performed by the non-membranous organelles. So that's why they have different, different adaptation in their membranes. Also, in single membrane organelles, they include endoplasmic reticulum, large permanent vacuole, gogi apatas, peloxomes, or microbodies. We have lysosomes and centrioles or centrals. So in starting here, let's start with the double membranous organelle and let's start to discuss nucleus. So nucleus is the central core of eukaryotic cell. Every eukaryotic cell have nucleus. And as we discussed earlier, eukaryotic cell means all cells with the true nucleus. And it is the largest structure of the cell organelle. So all of the cell organelle, the largest one is the nucleus. Normally a cell contains only one nucleus. However, some protozoans, such as palamation, they have two nucleus, namely macronucleus and the meganucleus. So in the organisms with the two nucleus, because protozoa, they are unicellular, means they have one cell. And being unicellular, they have large size. So they have large size and they have only one cell. So only one nucleus is not enough to control all activities of the cell. That's why the nucleus decided to divide into two pieces, that is macro and the mega. So macronucleus control its activities and mega nucleus control its activities as we discussed the area in the concept of, of the cell. So the nucleus is found in all eukaryotic cell except in mature phloem, sieve tube element and lead blood cell of the animal. So sometimes teachers they can ask you where where the the or which kind of cell they lack in nucleus. The mature flow and sieve tube element and the red blood cell they lack nucleus and this is for different reasons as we shall discuss them all of these cells they are in transportation for example red blood cell they lack nucleus to give more space for the hemoglobin to be packed and to carry more oxygen because the function of the red blood cell is to carry oxygen around the body so even mature flow and sieve tube they they lack nucleus to give more lumen for the translocation of the food substance producing the leaves. So when you are going to study the, the structure of nucleus, nucleus is typically spherical or oven shape, bounded or enclosed by a double membrane called the envelope. 
known as nuclear envelope. So the nuclear pole allows the exchange of material between the nucleus and the cytoplasm, such as entry and exit of messenger RNA. Messenger RNA, RNA exit from the nucleus into the cytoplasm for protein synthesis. But there is entry of the nucleotides for the synthesis of the messenger RNA or synthesis of the new strand of the DNA during DNA replication. So newly made ribosomes can live through nuclear pole and molecule, protein and the nucleotides. Quite well, different molecules they can live from the nucleus and different molecules they can enter the nucleus needed for manufacturing of ribosomes and DNA. So ribosomes they are made up in the nucleus and DNA or the process, the whole process of DNA duplication takes place in the nucleus as we shall discuss in deep in the genetic steps. So the outer membrane is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum that is covered with the ribosomes for carrying out protein synthesis. Inside the nucleus, there is a matrix called nucleoplasm or SAP. So the nucleoplasm contains chromatin and nucleoli. Singular, it is called nucleolus. So a chromosome is a very long DNA molecule and associated with protein. This protein associated with DNA is called histone protein. That carry portion of the heritable information, which is gene of organism. In other words, chromosome is a thread like structure which carry unit of inheritance that is genes so within a nucleus we say the the major or the 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 major function of nucleus is to carry little information from the parent to the offspring so what carry the little information is the dna within the the nucleus and this dna dna is long strand so the dna is coiled and when it is coiled, it is associated with the histone protein to make a structure called chromosome. So, a gene, we can, we can define it as, a gene can be defined as the region of DNA that controls the characteristics. So, in the cell, we have a very long DNA, very long DNA coiled. So, a piece of DNA can determine a certain characteristics, maybe hair demarcation or maybe hair color. So when you, you see your hair, they are black or your hair are white, it's because of the genes carried in the DNA. A piece of DNA can determine the color of your hair, the color of your skin, the demarcation of your hair, whether you'd be tall or you'd be short. All of those characteristics, they are determined by the DNA. They are determined by the piece of DNA called the gene. So a gene can be defined as the region of DNA that control entire characteristics. It is usually corresponds for a sequence used in the production of specific protein or DNA. So a gene carries a biological information in a form that must be copied and transmitted from each cell to its progeny. So here on the structure of nucleus, on the structure of nucleus, let me find a, a diagram for you here for this structure of, of nucleus. So the nucleus looks like this in its structure. And here we have a nucleolus. From the nucleolus, we have DNA called and from granules called heterochromatin. Then we have euchromatin. Euchromatin looks like thread like structure. We have nuclear pole, then you have laugh and plasmic reticulum surrounding the nucleus. Then you have ribosomes attached to the Laphondoplasmic reticulum. So simply the, this is the diagram of the nucleus and you can see it in the in the biological science book. So we can go deep to discuss about the chromatin organization and the things about the adaptation of nucleus. But the all the things about chromatin organization we shall discuss them in reproduction the genetics. But here we can just go faster. That is chromatin is the organization of DNA and basic protein called histone. Or chromatin is composed mainly of coils of DNA bound to basic protein called histone. So DNA is a wound around the histone which form bed-like structure called in nucleosomes and these in turn are regularly packed in chromatids. Kwa hiyo ukiona DNA ambavu ime, ime zunguka histone ni kama vile ambavu unako umeweka shanga kwenye kamba. So we have a strand then we have tunakotu na shanga mle. That's why we call it the bed-like structure. So the term chromatin means colored material. 
because when you strain them with the strains such as hematoxic and eosin, they appear with the, with the purple color. That's why you call them colored structure. And in fact, the fact that this material is easily strained for viewing with the microscope. During nuclear division, chromatin strain more intense and it become more conspicuous because it condenses into more tightly. Tightly coiled thread like chromatin. So each nucleus encloses fixed the number of chromosomes. So different cells they have different number of chromosomes, such as human being cell have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. So chromatins are of two types. We have heterochromatin, which remain tightly coiled during interface and continue to strain intensely. They are largely located towards peripheral area of the nucleus. And we have euchromatin, which is closely coiled the chromatin and is largely located towards the center of the nucleoplasm. This is thought to contain DNA, which is genetically active during interface. So here in the types of chromatin, euchromatin is generally active during interface, while heterochromatin is inactive during interface. So nucleolus, nucleolus is the round body within a membrane, which looks like a large dark spot when observed by microscope within a nucleus. A nucleus may contain up to four nuclei, but within each species, the number of nuclei is fixed. While the number of nuclei within the nucleus is fixed per a species. The function of nucleolus is to synthesize ribosomal RNA or ribosomes, the protein producing organisms. So, as we discussed earlier, that ribosomes they produce proteins, and we, we shall discuss later in ribosomes and even in the genetics, how the ribosomes, they synthesize protein. It is strained intensely because of large amount of DNA and RNA it contains. The densely straining core of nucleolus is made up of DNA from one or several chromosomes. These contain many copies of genes that code for the RNA needed to make ribosomes. So that is ribosomal RNA. So nucleolus in a kwena large amount of DNA pamuja na RNA. Bapu kwenye DNA na kotu na genes ya mbozi ndakio kukodi fo ribosomo RNA. So ribosomo RNA ni RNA ya mbozi natengeneza ribosomes. During nuclear division, the nucleus seem to disappear, but this is because the DNA disperses. Kwa siyo kwamba nucleoli napotea ni kwa sabu DNA inasamba, they resemble after nuclear division. So they reassemble zina jikusanatin after nuclear division. Along the central core of nucleolus is a less dense region where ribosomal RNA is beginning to be folded and combined with the protein to make ribosomes. Kwa pale katikati ya nucleolus, ndipo ambapo ribosomal RNA na kwa na jikusanya pale. The partially assembled ribosomes move out through the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm where assembly is completed. So function of nucleus. Function of nucleus, it contains DNA, which organizes into genes, which control all activities of the cell. So all activities of the cell, they are controlled by the genes present in the nucleus. P8 contains genetic material in the form of chromosome, which control inheritance of characteristics from parent to offspring. Yet out it involves in the production of ribosomes, that is, production of ribosomes and RNA, such as messenger RNA. So you can say it is involved in the production of ribosomal RNA and the messenger RNA. Nuclear division is the basis for cell reproduction. Cell diseases can produce karma a nuclear division. Like in all genetic variation are caused by the changes in the genetic material present in the nucleus. This genetic variation contribute to evolution. So from there, that's the end of nucleus. Now, stataka ni unganishe pamoja na organo nyingine. So the next discussion, I will discuss about the mitochondria, chloroplasty, all the facts about the, about the endoplasmic theory, endoplasmic theory, endosymbiotic theory of the cytoplasm and the mitochondria, similarities of the mitochondria and the, uh, mitochondria and the chloroplasty and differences and facts like that. So let me wish you nice studies for here now. And then in the next lecture, I will discuss about those concepts, nice studies, and be with me, subscribe my channel for more updates.